Good evening and welcome to World Changers Bible Study. I am Sandra Boyce, your presenter for the evening. And if it's your first time joining us, I want to say a special welcome to you. If it's not your first time, I want to say a welcome back. We are at the beginning of a new series, uh, Living a Life of Favor, episodes in the life of Joseph. Now, if, if it's your first time on our channel, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so that every time we post new content, you will be able to see it. I also want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook, like our page, and uh, follow us and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to ensure that you are following everything that is posted. Now, World Changes Bible Study is brought to you compliments of the Churches of God in the Garden Community in St. James and Silver Sands in Christ Church. So as I said, we are at the beginning of a new series, Living a Life of Favor, episodes in the life of Joseph. And we are in today's, we are today at session number four. And we would have started off the topic when God has a plan, a framework for favor. In session number one, we would have looked at the cause of favor, where we examined what caused God's favor to be on Joseph's life. And then in session number two, we looked at the consequences of favor, what happened to Joseph as a result of having God's favor in his life. And then last week, we looked at a crisis, the crisis of favor, where we examined some of the crises that Joseph encountered and how God's favor on his life was able to help him to maneuver through these crises. Now, remember, if you've missed episode one, two, or three, you can go back to our channel and you can recap and, and review them. Um, they are there for your perusal. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the topic, why building is critical, the foundation of faith. Why building is critical, the foundation of faith. Now, let's talk a little bit about buildings this evening. Let's examine the basic components of a building, first of all. What is necessary for a building? What is it necessary for a building to have? Now, as I did a little bit of research, uh, I recognize that there are three base requirements or components that every building needs. Number one, every building needs a foundation. Number two, every building needs a plinth. And number three, every building needs a superstructure. Now the foundation is necessary, it is said, to evenly distribute the entire building load onto the soil in such a manner that no damaging settlements can take place. So the foundation needs to be constructed on solid or good ground. The plinth is normally constructed just above the ground level and immediately after the foundation. It raises the floor above the ground level and it prevents surface water from entering the building. And the superstructure is that visible part of the building which lies above the ground level. So that's the part that consists of the walls and the rooms and the floors, the doors and the windows. So these are the three basic requirements and components of a building. The foundation, the plinth and the superstructure. But this evening I want us to zero in on foundations. We're going to be looking this evening at foundations, when, when building and the foundation of your faith, when building is critical. So what is a foundation? Now, a foundation is the base of a home. It holds walls and roofs. It maintains a continuous load path by transferring the load from the structure into the layers of the soil below. Why is a foundation so important? It's important because it distributes the load from the structure to the soil evenly and safely. It's important because it anchors the building to the ground so that under lateral loads, the building will not move. Why is it so important? It's important because it prevents the building from overturning due to lateral forces. So the foundation bears the strain of the heavy load of the building. It can withstand storm damages. It protects the building from flooding and it provides insulation in some countries uh, where, where insulation is um, put into the buildings. So aside from holding up the building and bearing the heavy load, 
It is said that the foundation also acts as a stabilizer against lateral or side-to-side -side movements. So the foundation is said should be strong enough to withstand inclement weather, like storms or heavy rains or harsh winds that could batter the building. Now, even if we believe that a simple house with bricks will be strong enough to last for years, we are not entirely correct. What makes an infrastructure sturdy and sufficient enough to keep up years of battering is a solid foundation. So if you want to have a building that you can pass down for generations, you have to invest more in the foundation of the building. So a strong building starts with a foundation, a good foundation. So what are the key things that we want to note about foundations this evening? Now we're going to be sharing over the next couple of sessions on the three topics of the design of the foundation, the development of the foundation, and the maintenance of the foundation. But just for tonight, we're going to be uh, discussing the whole idea of the design of the foundation. Now, here are some facts about foundations. Foundations are built to carry load. Foundations can be shallow, or foundations can be deep. Foundations are built to withstand pressure. Foundations are the main reason behind the stability of any structure. The stronger the foundation, the more stable the structure. A proper foundation distributes load onto the surface of the, of the bed uniformly. And this uniform, uniform transfer helps to avoid unequal settlement of the building. So additionally, if you have a tall building like a skyscraper or a building constructed on a very weak soil, you need a deep foundation. So the taller the building, the deeper the foundation. And if you intend to extend the building vertically in the future, then you need from the beginning to have a very deep foundation. What are we talking about? We're talking about design. We're talking about the design of the foundation, what it involves, what it, what it entails, what it's all about. So let's look a little closer at the foundation and how this relates to the building of our faith. Now, it is because of the foundation that a building can exist for any length of time. A building can withstand movement and battering and external forces because of the foundation. So when we look at the life of Joseph, can we deduce that he had a good foundation? Can we see evidence of a deep foundation or a shallow foundation? Can we see evidence of him being able to withstand pressure? Can we see strength of character? Can we see any kind of stability of character? Now, the fact that Joseph was able to resist Potiphar's wife is evidence alone of a deep foundation. The fact that he was able to forgive his brothers is evidence of a strong foundation. The fact that he was able to flourish in every situation is evidence of a strong foundation. I think that Jacob can give himself a pat on the back because although he did cause a crisis uh, by showing favoritism in his family, he evidently also taught Joseph about God and about trusting in God. So he created a good foundation that then Joseph was able to build on. So although the choices that had to be made were, were made by Joseph himself, the foundation that he had, the foundation that was laid by Jacob, by his parents, the, the foundation that he grew up around, the things that he saw happening, the lessons he learned, this foundation was what was able to help him to be able to make informed choices. So my question is, what is your foundation this evening? What kind of design does your foundation have? What is your foundation structured from? What is it grounded in? Who is it grounded in? What makes up your foundation? Do you have something or someone who can help you to keep you grounded in difficult times? Do you have something or someone who can help to bear the load in tough times? 
What is your foundation rooted and grounded in? What is your foundation based on? Who is your foundation rooted and grounded in? Robert H. Schiller once said, tough times never last, but tough people do. Tough times never last, but tough people do. So the foundation of our faith, what our faith is built upon, is critical to our building, which is our life. The foundation of our faith, what our faith is built upon, is critical to our building, which is the equivalent of our life. So the foundation that Joseph had was critical to him being able to manage all the situations that he had to deal with. And likewise, the foundation that we have, the foundation that we build for our lives, is what is critical to our lives. The foundation that Joseph had was able to carry the load when things got difficult. The foundation that Joseph had was able to withstand the pressures that he faced. The foundation that Joseph had was able to help him to be strong. Foundations. We're talking about foundations this evening. Now, foundations can sometimes fail. And some of the reasons they fail are often due to weak or structural connections. So, weak or structural connections to the walls or the floors above them can cause a foundation to fail. Now, if we want a solid foundation without cracks, then we need to have strong connections to the one who created us. Remember, weak structural connections can cause foundations to fail if it's not connected well to the walls or to the floors above. And similarly, if we want to have a solid foundation, if we don't want our foundation to have a weak structural or to, to create cracks, then we need to be connected to the one who created us. Now, weak connections lead to strain on the building. In a physical building, if you have weak connections, that leads to strain in the building. Likewise, in our Christian walk, if we don't have a strong connection to the creator, that will lead to strains on our relationship and strains on our life. If we want to have a building or a life that can withstand pressure, if we want to have a building or a life that can handle the load that life can sometimes throw our way, if we want to have a building that is strong, then we have to have a solid foundation. We have to be connected to the source of our strength. We have to be connected to our creator. What else can make foundations fail? So not only can weak structural connections make foundations fail, but improper concrete mixture can also make foundations fail. Now, inadequate or exposed uh, concrete foundations, if the design is not adequate enough to hold that foundation, that can lead to cracking and it can lead to fragments breaking off. Now, the mixture, it is said, has to be done well. The concrete mixture has to be done well. So if you have a poor concrete mixture, that can lead to foundation failure. Likewise, if we don't have a good, uh, a good mixture of, of, our, of our relationship to our creator, if we don't have a good mixture of prayer and the word and, and studying, if we don't have a good mixture of things that will build our relationship and things that will help us to become strong, we can see cracks in our foundation. Thirdly, what else makes a foundation fail? Soil that is not appropriately prepared. So if you don't have good soil or soil that has been prepared properly before you lay that foundation, you can see cracks happening in that foundation. And likewise, if as, if as people, as we are building our, building our foundation, building our lives, if we don't have a, a soil that is properly mixed, if we don't have the right conditions, if we don't have the right uh, situations, if we don't have the right things going on, then we're going to be able to see some cracks in our foundation as well. So we have to make sure that our foundation is properly prepared and properly, properly laid. We have to make sure that we keep a connection to the source of our strength. And we have to make sure that uh, the foundation that we lay is built on the rock, Christ Jesus. 
Because if we don't do these things, then we're going to be, see some cracks, then the pressures, and then the storms of life come. And we don't want to have that. We want to be like Joseph. We want to be able to face the storms and the, and the struggles and challenges of life uh, with a good, firm foundation that can give us strength to withstand these things. And so we have to make sure that we build our foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, foundations. Now, here are some design elements of a good foundation as I was doing my research. What makes a good foundation? Now, first of all, a good foundation sustains as well as transmits. A good foundation sustains as well as transmits. A good foundation is designed, is designed to not only sustain the weight or the pressure of the building, but it is said that it is also designed to transmit the weight evenly throughout the building so that no structural discretions occur. I'm going to say that again. A good foundation is designed to not only sustain the weight or pressure of the building, but it is also designed to transmit the weight evenly throughout the building so that no discretions occur. Now, in our lives, as was evident in the life of Joseph, we need a foundation that sustains the pressures of life. We need a foundation that can handle the weight of the pressures of life. We need a foundation that can manage the stresses that we have to deal with. We need a foundation that not only sustains the weight and the pressures of life, but we also need a foundation, it says, that transmits, that spreads, that shears to those around us. So yes, we all have pressures in life, but when we manage, how we manage our pressures and how we deal with our situations, we'll say to the people around us what kind of foundation we really have. So we need a kind of foundation that others can see and be encouraged and also want to become a part of. We need a foundation that when people look at us and see how we manage our life, that they should be saying, I want to have that kind of faith. I want to have that kind of foundation so that I too can learn to manage the pressures that I face in my life. So a foundation, a good foundation should sustain you during pressure and it should also transmit your, your, that pressure as that pressure is dealt with. Now the way that you handle your pressure says a lot about your foundation. If you crumble under the pressure, if you cannot sustain the weight of what comes at you during your life, then it is safe to say that you may have some cracks in your foundation. Now, Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 4 tells us, Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and carry you and I will sustain you and I will rescue you. This is a promise to us from God that even in our old age, even when we are gray, that he will sustain us. That's the kind of foundation we want to have. We want to have a foundation that will sustain us, that will be able to bear the weight and manage the weight of any situation or any um, challenge that we face. And also in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, he says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When we trust and hope in God, he renews our strength. That's the kind of foundation that we want. We want to be able to have that kind of hope and trust in God that regardless of what we face, regardless of what we go through, regardless of the challenges and the weights and the pressures of life, that we can be assured that God will renew our strength. That's why we have to build our lives on his foundation. And then again, in Isaiah 43 and verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. These are promises that God has made to us. Promises that we can rely on. Promises that we can trust. 
hope that he has given to us to assure us that if we build our foundation on him, if we trust in him, if we uh, depend on him, that he will renew our strength, he will give us hope, he will sustain us, he will help us to bear the weight and the pressures of life, even down to our old age. Now with such promises, how can you not be comforted? How can you not want to have this as your foundation? That good foundation built up and grounded on the promises of God, that good foundation is able to sustain us. And as we transmit that sustenance, it is able to draw others in as well. So a good foundation sustains and transmits. And not only does a good foundation sustain and transmit, but a good foundation, it said, is deep enough to withstand damage or distress. Now, buildings can sometimes have problems of shrinkage and swelling because of temperature changes. The taller the building, as I said earlier, the deeper the recommended foundation. Because the taller the building, the more weight is required for the sustenance of that building. Now, we don't know what damage or distress we're going to face in life, but we know this. If our faith is deep and is grounded and rooted in Christ, we can withstand any storm. Notice we're not saying that damage or distress will not come. Yes, damage and distress will come because we are living a life that's real. We're living, uh, we're living in, in this day and age. But what we're saying is that when or if damage and distress comes, because of our good foundation, we can have that trust and assurance that the promises of God are promises that we can rely on because of our relationship with him and we can withstand these storms. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18 to 19 tells us, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And what was the Apostle Paul saying in this verse? He was, he was asking and, and hoping that we could understand the love of God, how high and how long and how deep it is. And that through that understanding, even though it's great, that we can feel complete living a life of fullness through the power that comes from God. And so when we understand the love that God has for us, when we trust in his love for us, so that when we face situations, we know that God loves us regardless of what we're going through, that God will not put us through more than we can bear, that God will take us through every situation and every challenge that we face because he loves us. And as the word says, he doesn't have anything bad planned for us. He knows the plans he has for us. And the plans he has for us are good plans, plans to prosper us and to give us a hope and a future. And when we rely on these promises and on his love for us, when we are deeply rooted in his love and grounded in his love, then we can withstand any shaking, any struggles, any challenges that we face. Now, I noted with interest when I read that the taller the building, the deeper the recommended foundation. Now, I'm no contractor or builder, but I think it's safe to say that if it's the heavier the building, if the building is very heavy, has more weight, then it needs more depth to support that weight and that height. And so our faith needs to get deeper, to grow deeper. So the more, the more weight that is placed on our lives, the deeper our faith should grow and become. What do I mean by this? It means as we constantly get closer to God, we should be dropping off some of the weights and putting on some of the fruit. We should be discarding some of the impurities and clothing ourselves more in his righteousness. We should be releasing some of the inappropriate attitudes and behaviors, and we should be walking more like Christ, having the mind of Christ, responding more to situations like Jesus would want us to. It means that when we take a look at our life a year ago, and we look at our lives now, we should be able to see some positive changes, some growth in how we respond, how we react, and how we interact. 
So our faith should be getting deeper. We should be putting on more of Christ and letting go more of and letting go of self. As the word says, he must increase, but I must decrease. And that's how we know we are growing deeper in Christ and we're getting deeper because we are seeing more of Christ displayed in our daily life than before. And if more of Christ is being displayed in our daily lives than before, then it means that our foundation is becoming deeper. And so when the heavier weights or situations come, we are able to withstand them better because our foundations are deeper and stronger. Now, Joseph faced some heavy pressures in his life. And as we read through his stories, we can see this. But he was able to withstand these deep pressures, these heavy pressures, as I like to call them, because his faith was rooted and grounded, because his faith had depth. And it wasn't a superficial kind of faith that crumbled at the first sign of trouble. It wasn't a superficial kind of faith that was shaken by severe circumstances. It was a faith that was rooted and grounded in the promises of his God. Sometimes we allow simple things to shake our faith. Sometimes we allow simple situations to cause our faith to crumble. Sometimes when the pressures and the challenges come, they shake our foundations. But all oh, that we would have a faith like Joseph's that under heavy pressure, that we will become rooted and grounded and stable so that we can withstand. We would not be shaken and, and troubled by, by, by everything and our foundation will not crumble. Listen to these lyrics from this song, Standing on the Solid Rock. Verse one says, through my disappointments, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I am standing on the solid rock. Verse 2 says, now I'm pressing onward. Each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation. Firm is its foundation. So on the solid rock, I'll stay. The chorus says, I'm standing on the rock of ages safe from every storm that rages rich but not from satan's wages i'm standing on the solid rock so not only should a good foundation sustain and transmit and not only should a good foundation have depth and be deep but a good foundation thoroughly and finally this evening is located appropriately if you don't locate a foundation appropriately it's going to affect the future works of the building future work on that building is going to be greatly affected so if it's not stable if it's not secure whatever forces of nature come will affect it so we have to make sure our foundation is appropriately uh, de designed appropriately chosen we're talking about design this evening, the design of the foundation. Now, I'm reminded when I think about this idea of, of locating a foundation appropriately of the parable that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 7. He said, everyone who hears his words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Then he went on to say, everyone who hears his words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And you can read Matthew chapter 27 and verse 24 and 26 for that parable. So the location, we used to sing this song at Sunday school. Uh, the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock and the house on the rock stood firm. But then we say the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the waves came, and the rain came tumbling down. And then it says the rain came down and the floods came up. And what happened to the house on the sand? It crumbled. But the house that was built on the rock stood firm. And then it says, so build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the solid rock, and the blessings will come down. Is your foundation being built on the rock, Jesus Christ? 
That's what, we're, that's what we're speaking about. We're talking about locating the foundation appropriately. You must have the correct foundation. The founda your foundation must be built on the rock, Jesus Christ, and not on the shifting sands of the situations around you. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessings will come down. Are you building on the solid rock this evening? If we build our house on the rock, Christ Jesus, we can experience the blessings of God. We will experience pressures and challenges and have weights from the external things around us. But we, if we build our house on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be able to withstand those pressures. We will be able to experience the blessings of God. We will be able to experience the favor of God. And because of the experiences of the favor of God, we will be able to withstand the storms that we face. So let's recap. Tonight we looked at the design of foundation. We spoke about the importance of foundations to buildings. We said that in our lives, we need to ensure that the foundation that we are building our lives on is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to make sure that we are building and we're having a deep rooted foundation in Jesus. We need to make sure that we are trusting on his promises, relying on his, uh, on his word and putting it into practice in our lives. We need to make sure that as we look back on our lives, as we look back on our lives a year ago, that we can see more of Jesus being developed in our lives and less of ourselves. That we can see uh, areas in our lives where we used to have problems and, and challenges and coping, that we can see that we are coping better and we are managing better and we are doing things more the way that God says that we should. If we develop a connection with Jesus, if we obey his commands, if we walk according to his precepts, when the storms of life come, we will be able to be firm just like Joseph was in our response and we will be able to stand. Now, Joseph is our good example of how we should be able to withstand the storms of life because he had a good, firm foundation. His good, firm foundation gave him the strength that he needed to be able to withstand the pressures. And if we have a good, firm foundation built on the Lord Jesus Christ, we too will be able to withstand the pressures that we face. Now, may you be able to identify with the words of this hymn that I'm going to close with, a very common, popular hymn. And I hope that as you share these words today, that you are encouraged and challenged to build your foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. The lyrics say very simply, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus's blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. And then the final verse says, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. In him, my righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I want to thank you for joining us today for our World Changers Bible Study. This is where we want to wrap up our session this evening. And I want to encourage you to go back and read the, the account of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 through to 50. And be sure to join us next week for another episode of Living a Life of Favor, episodes in the life of Joseph. Remember that World Changers Bible Study is brought to you compliments of the Churches of God in the Garden Community and Silver Sands in Christ Church. And remember, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification button to receive notifications of every video that we post. Thank you for joining us tonight. May God bless you and see you next week.